Hello student, in a series of kinematics of circular motion, this is our fourth video. In this video, we are going to discuss relation between angular and a linear motion in the case of circular motion. In a circular motion, angular displacement is a major in radian. A radian is the angle described at center of a circle by an arc equal in the length to the radius of the circle. To understand it, Let's consider the object moves from position A to B. The angle described at the center of the circle by an arc S, which is equal to radius of the circle, is called one radian angle. So from this, we can say student one radian is equal to R. As one radian is related with the radius, hence the name is a radian. Now student, let's suppose that the object is moves from position A to B in time delta T. An arc length delta S describes an angle delta theta at the center of the circle. So for delta theta, arc length is equal to delta S. But we know student, for one radian, arc length is equal to radius R. So take the ratio of the two. We have delta theta divided by one equal to delta s which is arc length divided by radius r. So delta theta is equal to delta s divided by r. For finite time, delta s is angular displacement in radian. Delta s is arc length in a meter. r is the radius in meter. As you can see student, the angular displacement is the ratio of two lengths. Hence it is a dimensional less quantity. Radian is the SI unit of angular measurement. Now let's find average speed and average angular speed using equation delta theta is equal to arc length divided by radius. For that, divide the equation by delta t. We have delta theta divided by t equal to 1 divided by r into delta s divided by delta t. We know student average speed is equal to delta s divided by delta t and that of average angular speed is equal to delta theta divided by delta t. Let's substitute the value. We have angular speed omega is equal to linear speed v divided by r. This is a magnitude form of relation between angular speed and the linear speed. We know student average angular speed is equal to average angular velocity. It is because finite angular displacement is a scalar quantity. But student average speed is not equal to average velocity. It is because student as you can see in the diagram arc length delta s is not equal to displacement delta r. So that student, we can't use this formula delta theta is equal to arc length delta s divided by r to find the velocity. So that we need to express the given equation in the vector form. To represent the given equation in the vector form, we need to find out the linear displacement. Here we are interested to find out magnitude of linear displacement. For that, let's consider triangle AOB using triangle law of vector addition. Vector delta r is equal to vector r2 minus vector r1. Magnitude of a delta r is equal to mod of vector r2 minus r1. We know student magnitude of a vector r1 is equal to magnitude of vector r2 which is equal to r. Using formula for the magnitude of vector a delta r is equal to under root of r square plus r square minus 2r square into cos theta, where the theta is the angle between the vector r1 and r2. Now delta r1 is equal to under root of 2r square minus 2r square into cos theta. Take a 2r square common. We have delta r is equal to under root of 2r square into bracket 1 minus cos theta. 1 minus cos theta is equal to 2 times sine square theta by 2. Let's substitute the value. We have delta r is equal to under root of 2 r square into 2 into sine square theta by 2. So we have delta r is equal to under root of 4 r square into sine square theta by 2. Lastly, we have equation delta r is equal to 2 r sine theta by 2. 
This equation is the magnitude of linear displacement. This equation is not useful to find the relation between linear velocity and that of angular velocity. It is because during for the finite time interval, even the delta r is a vector quantity, but the angular displacement is not a vector quantity. It is a scalar quantity. So student, I need to express both these displacement in a vector form. For that, I have to consider the motion for a very small time interval dt. Let's suppose that the object moves from position A to B. It describes an arc ds and angular displacement is d theta. We know student for delta t tends to zero, arc length delta s is equal to vector dr and that of d theta that is the angular displacement is equal to vector d theta. So reconsider the equation delta r is equal to 2r sine theta by 2. For delta t tends to 0, sine d theta by 2 is approximately d theta by 2 and that of a delta r is equal to vector delta r. Now substitute this value in above equation. We have dr is equal to 2 into r divided by 2 into d theta. 2, 2 gets cancelled. We have dr is equal to r into d theta. This is magnitude form of relation between linear displacement and angular displacement. Now student, let's find out instantaneous velocity at position c. Vector r bar is a position vector at position c. As we say student, the velocity is instantaneous velocity so that there must not be change in the time. That is change in time delta t should be zero. Along with that, there should not be change in the magnitude and direction of a displacement at that point. So that you can imagine student to find the instantaneous velocity, you have to consider the object get stuck at that position where it can't change its magnitude and direction. So in such a case, how one can find out the instantaneous velocity? So that we need to take the help of a concept of a limit. To understand it, let's consider the object moves from position A to position B in small time dt. It describes an angle d theta. dr is the displacement. For delta t tends to zero, we take the limit of average velocity as delta t tends to zero, which is equal to vector dr by dt. Now observe carefully student vector dr. From position A to position B, there is no change in the magnitude and direction of dr, even there is a change in the time. This vector dr is perpendicular to the radius vector r. That is vector dr is a tangent at the position C. So this rate of change of displacement is give us the instantaneous velocity V bar. From this we can say that instantaneous velocity V bar is a tangent at a point C and its slope is a dr by dt. The slope of a tangent is the same from position A to position B. Now students, Let's find out relation between instantaneous velocity and instantaneous angular velocity. For that, let's consider equation delta r is equal to 2r sine theta by 2. For delta t tends to 0, sine d theta by 2 is approximately d theta by 2. So take the limit of above equation. Limit as average velocity as a delta t tends to 0 is equal to 2 into r divided by 2 into limit of average angular velocity as a delta t tends to zero. As we know student, for the delta t tends to zero, the angular displacement is a vector quantity. So that we have dr by dt is equal to two into r divided by two into d theta by dt, which gives us the relation between instantaneous velocity v is equal to r into instantaneous angular velocity. This is the magnitude form of a relation between instantaneous velocity and instantaneous angular velocity.
Now let's represent the given displacement in the vector form. As you can see student, the vector d theta is a perpendicular to the plane of motion. In the plane of motion, there are two vectors, vector r and a vector dr. As I already discussed student, vector dr is a tangent at a point c, so that it is a perpendicular to the radius r. So vector dr is a perpendicular to the r and a vector d theta is a perpendicular to the plane containing vector r bar and a vector dr. From this, you can say that vector dr, vector r and vector d theta are mutually perpendicular to each other so that I can express it as vector dr is equal to vector d theta cross vector r where the cross product shows you that dr is perpendicular to the plane containing vector d theta and vector r. Similarly, student, I can show relation between velocities. As we know, the instantaneous velocity has the same direction as that of dr and that of instantaneous angular velocity has the same direction as that of d theta. From this student, I can write instantaneous velocity vector v is equal to instantaneous angular velocity vector omega cross vector r bar. Now to understand it more, let's consider the right hand fingers are curled from vector d theta to vector r. The outstretched thumb gives you the direction of a dr. Similarly, we can explain the vector relation between velocities. Hope you understand the concept student. Do watch, share, like my channel. Thank you.